<laughs> Mouth. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing today? I believe we've gotten even louder than this. I said, how are you doing today? Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> My name is Jason. I am the executive producer of the YouTube channel Make Em Laugh Films. And to my side is Peter Pappas. He owns Vieira Comics. We came all the way from Florida to be with you fine people today. Yes, thank you for being here. We're honored. Um, almost two years ago, I started a comic shop called Vieira Comics in Melbourne, Florida. I moved from New Jersey. Uh, I have some New England roots. I went to college in Rhode Island. So I love it up here. We're happy to be here. Um, and when I opened up the shop, I, uh, I noticed uh, that there were a lot of people that cosplayed and um, really had nowhere to cosplay. Um, unless there's a convention going on, there's, there's no place to just dress up and go. So, um, you know, free comic book day at, at your local comic shop and whatnot, but that's only once a year and the conventions are few and far between. So um, I had the idea with Jason to um, have more uh, cosplay events at the store. And um, we uh, turned that into uh, basically a, a bi-monthly, sometimes even three times a month, uh, events at the store where people can come and, and, uh, and cosplay. But it's become much more than that. It's, it's more of a community now. And, um, and we're going to help you uh, understand how you can do that here, even if you don't own a comic shop. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about community building and finding those like-minded creative people that you can explore your passions with. Like Peter said, you don't necessarily have to own your own business. It could even be as simple as starting your own Facebook group, creating an online community to uh, further cultivate um, the congregation of those like-minded individuals. You could start a YouTube channel entirely based on cosplay and get the word out online in that fashion then. Um, but essentially, you know, the biggest um, benefit that we have, we thoroughly love networking with people here at these conventions, at the comic book shop, through um, events related to cosplay, as well as making the YouTube videos. Yep. And um, the cosplay community is, is um, it, it's kind of underground sometimes. There's people that you, you may know, or, and, and they cosplay, and, and you didn't know they cosplay. And um, there's people that probably live in your neighborhood that cosplay that you would love to be networking with, talking with, you know, to, uh, and uh, if you don't have that hub or, or community or a, a page or uh, on Facebook or whatnot, it's gonna be tough to do. So uh, my first recommendation would be to uh, go to a local comic shop and um, maybe say to them, hey, um, can you maybe set up an event for such and such date and, uh, and I'll get all my cosplay friends to come and you can tell people to come to your store and have a sale that day and they can take pictures with characters. And that's basically how, probably the best way to start something like that. Um, because what will happen is people will be seeing you dress up and it'll spread. Other people that have think, been thinking about cosplay will start cosplaying. And uh, before you know it, you're gonna. Have, we have a huge group of people. We have two uh, Facebook groups in Florida, where we are in Central Florida. We're near Orlando, um, and then uh, the one group has almost 2,000 members, and our group, which is a new group, has about 800 members. And and there's so many people that are always just dying for the chance to dress up and, and meet or talk about uh, the cosplay, how to build cosplay, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And then rewinding back to the first event that we did together um, between Make Em Laugh Films and Vera Comics, we have a business partnership. Uh, we did a Deadpool day at the shop where I came in to dress up as Deadpool to you know, network and be in character for a bunch of families. And it was just such a great experience. But going from one person to, say, hundreds that come now to the events at Vera Comics, it just snowballed into something uh, outstanding as a result of our continued efforts to uh, network and really promote fun and expression. Um, people, I like to think of it as cheers every time someone walks into Vieira Comics with our cosplay events. Like everyone knows each person's name and they're always glad that, they're, that they came. For sure, yeah. Um, that first event we did was uh, a trial. We didn't know what to expect. I did know that people liked coming into stores and, and, or a movie theater and seeing people dressed up. Um, but man, that was probably my best day ever at the store and uh, at the time it was a very new business and it was tough to get people in and let people know you're there and that was a great way for me to do it and Jason 
uh, was more than happy to dress up as Deadpool that day, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's it's contagious because after I wasn't even cosplaying at the time, I I, uh, I said, uh, well, next time we do this, I'm gonna dress up too, and, and that's how I got into it. And I've been cosplaying probably since 2008, right after the Dark Knight came out, started making YouTube videos with a Dark Knight parody. Um, but since meeting Peter, I've you know taken upon myself to take cosplays to the next level. Like I pretty much doubled the number of cosplays that I have since meeting him a couple years ago, having that outlet in the comic book shop with the different cosplay events, and then, you know, upping the quality of them, because I see um, these fine people that we network with at these events and the awesome stuff that they do. It's just a community full of inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, at the time, I, like I said, I was doing zero cosplays. I then uh, got a, a CW Flash costume, and that was my first official cosplay. And uh, now uh, the number between the we you know we have a YouTube channel that that we do a lot of superhero parodies on. So there's a lot of minor characters I've done, but the number is over 30 at this point of different cosplays. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of the community that we've built. Yeah. And then just as another benefit too of growing this cosplay community, we've brought in talent from other areas. We have a bunch of local artists like really flourishing artists who will be headliners one day at these bigger conventions um, to come in to put their work on display and to do pieces for you know people coming into the shop uh, for commission uh, jobs and everything. We have real-time photo editors. We have photo shoots that take place in the middle of our cosplay events. And yeah, we have the option to have those real-time photo edits done um, as well. And you know, of course, the photographers too. And we have now Photographers, cosplayers, and artists, they come from as far sometimes as three hours away just to be at these events that we put on. So it's humbling that people have that level, level of dedication as a result of us starting um, what we have going. Sure. And, and the, as far as the local comic shop in your area, um, the comics that come out now are the driving force between cosplay today. So. Um, you know, some of the cosplays you'll see today at the convention will be from TV and movies, but a lot of them will be directly from the comics. And, um, and it's cool because we, we were just at Florida Supercon a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, and um, about two or three weeks before that, uh, Scott Campbell uh, uh, came out with some new uh, Mary Jane uh, covers on uh, one of his amazing Spider-Man books. And we, in just two or three weeks' time that passed, we saw so many people that were cosplaying the covers of that book. And, and it really was cool to see and how quickly people are, are seeing the comic and then taking the, that idea for a cosplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Or seeing your favorite superhero, like Spider-Man, his new costume revealed at the end of the movie. I turned to Peter and I said, just wait, like, guaranteed tonight some cosplayer is going to be working on this costume and have it done within the matter of hours. Yeah, and we've Such seen a quick few turnaround. around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the comic books, they're, you know, drastically influencing the uh, cosplay community, and I'd say it's the same vice versa as well. Mm -hmm. So, to, to really grow the, the, your community and, and to combine comics and cosplay uh, for yourself here, um, the number one thing besides the comic shop you'll also need is a, a social media presence. Um, an Instagram page will help, a uh, Facebook page and Facebook mm -hmm. group will definitely help. Uh, the Facebook group is probably how we communicate um, uh, most of our uh, uh, events and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then having that community group, um, you know, it's a surefire way to get the word out about your events then. and people, they learn to look out for them, too, on a regular basis. Um, due to the fact that we've been traveling to different conventions and doing these panels, we haven't had an event at the shop, uh, probably in about a month or so, um, like a cosplay event, but when we posted our lineup of events coming up in the next few weeks, you know, the interest had just skyrocketed. We didn't even have to really promote it even yet at that point. We had people saying, oh my god, finally! Yeah. You know, now we can unveil these new cosplays at, you know, your new events now. Um, in addition to, of course, doing our Facebook posts then, um, and then, you know, promoting people to share their cosplays within those Facebook groups. Okay, show us what cosplay you're working on now, like what supplies do you have? Or maybe someone has a question about how to craft this costume now. Um, where do I obtain this supplier? Maybe someone specializes in armor building. Let's get a commission job going. Or maybe a photographer's needed for this uh, Spider-Verse shoot, um, downtown Melbourne, for instance. 
Um, you know, it's just such a, a, such a great, efficient way to bring talent together. And um, for instance, uh, well, a few weeks ago when we knew we were going to be here, um, we wanted to try and start networking with Boston cosplayers. We didn't really know anybody. Uh, a few people watch our channel and a few people followed us already on Instagram, but um, one way I was, uh, and Jason was searching for, um, we, was the hashtags through Instagram. That's, mm -hmm. that's going to be a good way to communicate initially until you, you meet more people. So I, I probably met at least 10 people, maybe more, just by hashtagging Boston, Boston cosplay, mm -hmm. exactly. uh, Boston comics, things like that. Um, and, and I was, that's probably, uh, once you do start your Instagram account, the hashtags are key uh, to, to networking and meeting people. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, due to that networking, we met our booth member, um, Amelia, who is a local um, flourishing cosplayer. Um, and, you know, in that way, building a friendship with, um, you know, people like that, then you build, you know, social capital. So, um, you know, she's been introducing us to her friends and everything now, too, uh, further networking opportunities. And, you know, we, you know, encourage her to put her prints on display then. So she gets that benefit out of this networking experience, gets to showcase her cosplay. And then we all, you know, win because it's just snowballs then. Yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've turned uh, uh, what started as just like a small daytime uh, event at the store into like, now we're trying to up the, up, up the bar. Uh, so now we've turned into, uh, our, our events sometimes are at night. Now we have uh, drink and draws where pe people will come and cosplay at the store. Yeah. Our artists will come and start sketching them and then it's BYOB, so that's how we can get around uh, the alcohol part of it. Yeah, actually we've rebranded Drink and Draw recently because it's a pretty unoriginal name. We've come across hundreds of people that do the same. Um, so now we call it Cosplayers and Artists Party because we like to see it as a mini Comic Con with every single event that we put on at the shop, bringing all this um, different facets of talent together under one roof. And another thing uh, that we've been doing uh, quite a bit is whenever a superhero movie comes out, uh, we set up a group and a Facebook uh, event for um, a meetup at the local theater. And you'll be surprised how many people will come dressed up if they know other people will be dressed up. I mean, you don't want to be the only guy uh, in a Superman suit. It, you, you will get a few looks, but I would do it. But mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have done it a year ago, but the more you cosplay, the more brave you get. Yeah, absolutely with that. Yeah, and your confidence builds too. Um, like, I started out doing this thing, well, on my own at first, but I was lucky in that I found like-minded people at the University of Illinois, where um, I started the YouTube channel. And you get those supporters then, your friends, uh, first and foremost, your fellow actors, your crew. Um, but meeting, you know, fans and our supporters or, you know, like-minded talent. Like, I moved down to Florida maybe three years ago, and I thought that I was going to be, you know, doing this alone for, for a little bit because I wasn't sure what the cosplay community was. But then meeting Peter and then meeting some of our team members that we currently work with, we we're able to grow our own cosplay community then. So it was no longer an obscure thing in the community after several months of us building this. Like now it's the expectation, okay, there's gonna be these events at Vera Comics, there are gonna be these new YouTube superhero comedy videos, these cosplay videos done by the Make Em Laugh Films team uh, within the community, or photo shoots, uh, pretty much anything under the cosplay roof. Mm -hmm. okay. Does anybody have any uh, questions? Um, I Curiosities? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a counselor, but I've only been cosplaying since uh, November 2016. And I'm still learning things. And I just, one of the things that I'm frustrated with is finding that I need a handler, somebody to help me get into my, in and out of my costume. And mm -hmm. plus, all I have is just. No, absolutely not. Um, it's definitely realistic to achieve each of those elements. 
Um, it'll take a little bit of patience, possibly, because um, at first I didn't have um, the connections that I now have. Um, and we've met some great people who like function as like handlers or moderators now, like whether it's people, you know, friends from the comic book shop or people who have been in the videos or you know, different crew members. Like we've met friends over the years that actively help out either in front of the camera or behind the scenes or with the event planning. Um, just takes like a little bit of patience with it, but like events like this at conventions are just such a great avenue, a great venue to meet those like-minded people and then bring them to the fold. Um, in terms of the online presence, um, that, that also takes a little bit of time, especially at first too, because you might have just a few followers to start out, but with continued effort, like working at it every day with the hashtags and just continued regular content, like it will pick up and I promise you will find those people. Do, do you live near a comic shop? No, I don't. No? Uh, what about a bookstore? Like a Barnes and Noble type thing? No, so those are two two easy ways to to get this jump started, um, but there has to be uh, people in your area. Yeah, that, uh, I mean, unless you live in rural uh, farm mm -hmm. farm land in, in Massachusetts, <laughs> there's going to be people there. Yeah. And it could be as simple as starting it from your home. Like I started, I filmed a lot of my um, the first YouTube videos from my college apartment, for instance. Like we had to keep the operation small and inexpensive, so that was the way to go. Or um, we were on a university, so we would have our meetups or our video shoots in literally the classrooms within the University of Illinois and just hope that you know, no class is going on at the time or no one walked in to kick us out. <laughs> um, but yeah, just whatever is available, like I would say just go for that as the resources uh, and just build up from there. Yes? Yeah, absolutely. So the YouTube platform is an excellent venue for advertisement for the comic book shop, VR Comics. We put the logo, VR Comics, in each of the parodies that we do, as well as we put the links to all the social media sites of VR Comics within the video descriptions because uh, many of our videos are filmed at the comic book shop and it's the comics um, and the different merchandise and everything. Those act as the backdrops in many cases for our parodies. So it's, like, it's good advertisements and we feel that our viewers, they really enjoy seeing that environment there. So it's just a great way to get the word out about um, the comic book shop then. Um, and you know, we've had people actually come from pretty far abroad because they've seen the comic book shop advertised through the videos. Um, recently, actually it was last week, we had someone come all the way from England just to say hi and check out VR Comics just because they're, they're fans of the YouTube videos. Yeah. It's you know, a very humbling experience, like we were like, or Peter was like, well, did you know, were you visiting family? Like, no, like, oh, the sole purpose was coming to check out the shop, which was a very humbling experience. Yeah, it was, it was mind blowing. It was, uh, it was parents of a 15 year old girl. A 15 year old girl was the fan of the channel, and, uh, and she might even be watching this, uh, Rebecca. <laughs> but, um, the, she was shaking when she met me, and, and that's something that we're still kind of laughing about because we're not famous, but at least. You know, we don't think we are, but there are people that are starting to uh, uh, see what we do online, and, and uh, to them we are. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, and then with the YouTube following, um, since meeting Peter and then having those regular shoots at the comic book shop, I've been able to um, build a significant local following, but also far broader than that. Um, like, we're pretty well recognized within our local community as a result of the channel and the comic book shop's efforts together, as well as we've had people recognize us here already mm -hmm. in Boston as a result of that. And um, it took a while, too, to get to, to get to that level that we're currently at. Um, back in 2008, I just started the YouTube channel. It probably took several years to even break a couple thousand um, subscribers. Uh, now we're resting at nearly 40,000 subscribers, and we probably... I would say I was probably around 6,000 when we first met, right? Mm -hmm. Only a couple years ago. So, like, you could see um, just the benefits that this, uh, the partnership between YouTube and social media presence with 
the cosplay community that is the comic book shop, like how much more momentum it has because there's that overlap. Sir? What keeps the drive going for your YouTube channel? Like, how do you get inspired instead of just like, hey, we've done this and It's legitimately what we love to do and we have the passion for it. Um, like our main favorite hobby is just making fun of stuff, man. Like our favorite subject matter to make fun of are those cosplay characters, the, the superhero characters, those comic book um, icons, um, to pass the time. And we have a group chat with all of our um, team members from the comic book shop and the YouTube channel. And um, we constantly joke around about these new ideas or like, okay, do you see this, new, this Batman versus Superman scene? Let's make a meme out of this. this Jesse Eisenberg sucks. Let's make a meme poking fun of him now. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're just always thinking of these new ideas and it's just fresh because um, we don't want to redo what we've done before. We want to amuse ourselves as much as we amuse the audience members and then the uh, attendees at the comic book shop. As, as far as the YouTube channel, we probably pull more from the superhero movies um, than we actually do from the comic books themselves because the comic books are driving what comes out in the superhero movies, but you may not see, if a comic came out uh, last month, you might not see that in a movie for about four, five or six years. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, not everybody reads the comics either, unfortunately, but they do see the images. Um, probably a lot of people didn't read that Scott Campbell uh, Spider-Man comic book that I mentioned, but they probably did see the cover online, because it was a very popular cover of Mary Jane uh, with the Iron Spider and the Mary Jane with uh, Iron Man armor on. So. Um, so uh, for the YouTube channel, we probably pull more from TV and um, our own imagination um, than we do. Uh, but we, we, we have friends, and we pitch ideas to each other, and we try and think of, is that funny to you? Mm -hmm. and, and if it is, then we, then we go ahead and run with it. Yeah. And while a lot of it is scripted content, there is uh, a lot of room for improvisation. Like we'll think of, OK, let's utilize this prop or this piece of, piece of merchandise in the comic book shop. And let's just riff off of that. Like, it's all about just having a good time, really. Sure. And if you're, uh, I'm not sure if you're in high school or college or whatnot, um, but um, I would suggest taking like a, a film or a acting class um, because that stuff will help and you'll also meet more like minded people mm -hmm. there. You probably meet some cosplayers there too mm -hmm. um, that you didn't know were cosplayers or wanted to cosplay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a natural fit. So um, I took a lot of theater uh, courses. I never did a play or anything like that. And I always wanted to act. And I just never had that venue until I met Jason. And now I, I, I do it all the time. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And when I was a kid, I wanted to act and you know be these comic book characters. Like my childhood hero was Michael Keaton's Batman. I just wanted to be Batman. And you know, not much has changed over the years. I'm still dressing up like these characters. I'm actually, I should do a Batman character as well. And you know, the comic book shop is the perfect venue to do those things. We have a uh, Batman day that we do annually, and we've had members of the Bat family attend it. And you know, just seeing um, kids' expressions, um, you know, lighting up when they see their favorite Bat family member take a picture with them, it's very rewarding. And you know, the YouTube videos is such a great exercise in getting in character, and then you know, further honing those creative ideas. Yeah. Any yeah. other questions? Or? But yeah, essentially, you know, combining cosplay and comics, um, you know, it's what we live for, it's what we're passionate about. We want to keep turning this into something even bigger. Um, you know, it started out as a small operation. Both Peter and I moved down to Florida, um, like, close to the same time, actually. And, you know, we started out with no connections down there. Um, but, you know, through our hard work, continued effort, and sheer willpower sometimes, like, we've turned this into, you know, something great, and, like, just we just encourage you guys to, like, hone in on what you're passionate about, and then those supporters will follow. Like, all it takes is a little bit of something to get the word out, and then, like, it'll spread. Like, people will keep liking what you're doing, and, and then reach out to you. How do I get involved in this? This is really cool. Uh, like, as long as you're passionate about it, there will be someone who's receptive to it. Sure, especially in the, in the fall coming up, you have Thor and Justice League. Um, those are going to be the two big movies. Go to your local theater, ask the manager, hey, do you mind if I got some friends together and, and we dressed up, you know, for that? 
um, they'd probably say yes, they'd love it, you know, because for them it'd be, uh, you know, fun for the customers. Um, and then from there, just spread it out. Put, make a Facebook event, um, tell your friends about it, spread it uh, on any group that you think is relevant. And you'll be surprised how many people might uh, come to that or, or reach out to you. It'll take time. I mean, when, when we first started the, the local community, there was a Facebook group for cosplayers. And I was very frustrated as a comic shop owner because I was trying to get them to come to the store to dress up. And, and a lot of them just, I don't know, maybe they didn't think it was real or, or whatnot, but it took a while for them yeah. to actually believe it and we, start coming. We essentially pulled the Thanos and said, fine, we'll do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah we, we started just w amongst our friends, built it up, and from there it spread. Everybody saw how much fun we were having. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, well, all right, I, I guess we should start going there and dressing up. And, and mm -hmm. Yeah, and also charity events in your community. Those are also great venues for cosplay, and there's such a great fit for it. Like everyone loves seeing superheroes doing a good cause, whether it's uh, visiting, um, your, like your local hospital, visiting with some of the patients there, or like we've done, we've participated in autism fundraisers, awareness events, um, also superhero 5Ks, um, events to end child abuse. Um, yeah, so superheroes are just such a great way to you know, act as a beacon to bring in the community. Um, just having that character, like Batman taking photos with the family members, or just putting a smile on a kid's face, um, you know, just goes a long way. And like those people will be grateful. And then you know, you build the social capital with those local organizations, and then they come to support your events. Then in the end. And uh, the gentleman that I said about business cards, those are actually pretty important if you're a cosplayer. Oh, yeah. Even if you're not a, a world famous cosplayer, they're still important because. When you do go to a convention and you're dressed up, um, people are going to take your picture, and then you can say to them, "Well, here's my card. Please hashtag or please uh, tag me in it," and mm -hmm. and that way you'll get a little bit more of a connection and a little bit more of a, a following through through that. It's, so and they're easy to make. Either you can use your real name or you can come up with a cosplay name. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe throw a picture of your favorite cosplay mm -hmm. on that card and then uh, have them printed up at Vista Print, they're not expensive, or even at a local uh, print shop. And uh, you'd be surprised at how many people will, you go to a comic convention and start handing them out, You'll, people will network with you and, and your Instagram kind of, mm -hmm. uh, family will grow up through that. Yeah, and then put your social media links too, like with your online posts, like with every single video that we post or every like event. We have all the Make Em Laugh Films social media pages, their links, as well as the Vera Comics social media pages, all those respective links. Just blast it out because um, everyone has their own personal favorite uh, venue of social media. Mine is Instagram. Um, I know that other followers like Facebook better, but cover all the bases then, because then you'll be able to grow your brand in every single way and you know, have that flashy um, icon, your logo. Yes, we have a question over here, sir. I was just going to say is on the business cards, as a photographer, when I come to the events, if someone like yourself has a business card and I take your picture and you give it to me, I'll send you a high-res copy. It's a great mm -hmm. way to get pictures of yourself mm -hmm. if you're into it. Sure. Other than having your friend, you get, you know, I have a $3,000 rig I'm walking around with. If I take your picture and you give me a card, I'll mm -hmm. send you a picture. That's a great, a great way to get built up. Absolutely, agreed 100%. Um, and when people come to our booth to take photos with us, we give our business cards out because not only do I want to get tagged in that photo with that person, but also have the ability to follow them afterward too. That's another connection, you know, maybe capitalize that at a future event. Maybe at Boston Comic Con next year we could do like a cosplay meetup with that cosplayer you just met. Yep. Um, and uh, photographers are very important, uh, so if in your area you do get to uh, build up a group or a community, get to know some local photographers too, because they'll be happy to work with you, they'll, yeah. they'll be desperate to work for, with you. They love shooting cosplayers, and uh, it's such a natural fit. You know? and, yeah. and we have a couple photographer friends that we just love working with. We do a lot of it ourselves too. Uh, Jason has some good uh, camera equipment and, and sometimes we'll close the shop at night and we'll put up a backdrop and we'll uh, do uh, photo shoots right in the store uh, for our friends. But um, uh, it, it is cool when, when some of our professional photographer friends take pictures of us. They're, just, they're notch above every, every, it makes a difference. Yeah, it stands out and people on social media, like um, in their eyes too, it'll help you get a following more quickly because 
higher quality photos, they'll get more traction. Those are more likely to go viral. Sure. And again, when people see what, how cool your pictures are, they'll, they'll want them too. And then they'll say to you, how do I do that? And then there you go, you just got another person to cosplay with. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how, the community will grow. The community wants to grow. Mm -hmm. It just needs somebody to, to take the leadership role exactly. and, and, and the catalyst. Yeah, yeah. and put, put those events out there. Um, say I'm going to be at such and such a place. Uh, so if you don't have a local comic shop by you, definitely go to a Barnes and Nobles or Books a Million or whatever uh, uh, big bookstores. They'll be happy. The manager, I'm sure, will be more than happy to set up a day on a Saturday for you guys to go and cosplay. They, they, they want it too, because the customers that come in will love it. So for, if, for that superhero movies that are coming out in the fall, you got Thor, you've got Justice League. Mm -hmm. That Friday night when the movie comes out, you could set up an event for uh, the local theater. And then that Saturday day, you could set up an event at a local comic shop or a bookstore. Mm -hmm. And both of those will drive uh, a lot of people that you probably didn't know cosplay uh, will come cosplay with you and you'll have a, a small group right after that. And that group will continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just all starts somewhere, um, and like I said earlier too, like every like ounce of um, well sweat, all the hard work that goes into it is just so worth it in the end. Um, just seeing how far that we've come, and just knowing how much higher we can take this. Um, now, as a result of our efforts doing um, combining the YouTube channel with cosplay and the comic book shop, we're able to go to you know events like this, travel to do these conventions, to do panels for you fine people, or you know further network at these conventions as well. We've met a ton of different cosplayers over the um, course of the past two days. We've filmed a couple new videos already too. Um, and you know, it just keeps feeding into itself, keeps growing then with every single project and every single event that we complete. Yeah. And um, we, what we've really grown our group in Central Florida to large numbers now and it'll just, it's, it's so organic and natural now it's going to happen without much work from us. Now we just need to put up the events. But so now, like Jason said, we're looking more nationally. So now we were in North Carolina a few weeks ago and we met a lot of like-minded cosplayers there that we're friends with now and, and we'll, we'll be continuing to work with them and take pictures with them whenever we can. And now hopefully uh, the connections we're making this weekend, we're gonna have Boston connections. See, the good thing about being in Florida is everybody visits Florida. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so everybody we're meeting at other states and whatnot, they're all at some point gonna come down to see us. We're close to Disney. So uh, these connections we're making are, are probably gonna be uh, lifelong connections. Yeah, do you have another question up front? You're on YouTube. What uh, other social media platform that helps drive people to your YouTube channel? Is Facebook better, Instagram? What I, I, pr I use um, all of it, actually. Um, Instagram, our Instagram page has a little bit of a bigger following than our Facebook page. Um, I just tend to post there more often than not. Um, but both are very useful um, in getting more followers, too. Like, Facebook is very strategic for getting events out. Um, like at the comic book shop or if we're planning, say, a flash mob, like we just did a Harley Quinn flash mob a couple hours ago, and I blasted that out on Facebook. We have a Spider-Verse flash mob that we're doing literally right after this at 4.30 in the East Lobby, a Hall C, FYI. <laughs> Blast it on social media. Instagram usually to pump out, you know, new photographs and everything, like photo shoots. And then we utilize Twitter to blast out the new videos to um, well, people with bigger followings than us currently. Like, say, the Guardians of the Galaxy parody that we've done, we tweeted that out to James Gunn, and we were fortunate enough to get that retweeted. So that, you know, getting retweeted uh, for each favorite that you accumulate on Twitter, that's more traction than for your link, and more followers than subscribers, viewers that come to the, to the YouTube channel. Yeah, it, it, he said it perfectly. Each, each page is a little different. Um, my pages are a reverse of Jason's. My Facebook page has uh, a lot of uh, likes and, and, and followers, whereas my Instagram is just now starting to grow. Personally, I think Instagram is the best way to uh, reach people, um, but for our local events, Facebook is the best way. But nationally and, and, and just for other reasons, I, I like Instagram a lot, and I'm just starting to get it to the point where it's starting to grow too. Um, so yeah, both, you need them all. You need every, everything, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, but um, for a local small event, Facebook is gonna be uh, the way to go, miss. Hi, um, you guys are from Central Florida. Have you ever um, gone and volunteered 
for um, Give Kids the World. Do you know the, the, they're connected with Disney? They're okay. um, a place for parents and kids that have um, cancer, a lot of these kids are terminal, and um, it's literally when you go in there, they turn the sirens off if there's an emergency, so that these kids can have a very normal visit to Disney, kids from all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know if you'd actually possibly go to there. Yeah, it's definitely something that's right up our alley. We'd absolutely yeah, love to participate. Um, and the other thing I wanted to know is, um, obviously, the gray hair. I'm an older person, and I'm wanting to um, cross-play for Make-A-Wish. Um, and so I was going to do um, Fairy Godmother and stuff. Have you ever had, like, the only thing I've heard is that sometimes when you work with organizations like Make-A-Wish and you go into the hospitals, the kids ask you these super awkward questions. Um, or like, you know, can you heal me because you're Superman or something like that. Have yeah. you had something like that happen and how did you address it? Um, well, actually just yesterday I was Dr. Strange and um, a boy who was special needs really wanted a picture with me and I was more than happy to do it. Um, and it, it was tough because he was grabbing every bit of my costume and tugging on, on it. It's an expensive costume. I smiled through the whole thing and I, I wasn't upset about it, but I was also trying not to have my costume ruined. Uh, and um, so you just have to the smile, grin through it, and because um, it's part of it, you know. Mm -hmm. He didn't know, and and by st I know I made him very happy, and I was, and that made me happy. Once the whole thing was over with, I was very, I was thrilled, I was happy, I was, yeah. I gave that kid a smile. Yeah, and there are awkward questions too. Uh, typically, I we got to stay in character and say something that'll make the kid feel better, like, uh, like walk away that experience with like a sense of hope or pride or amusement or something. Um, I always want to leave. Um, someone who's had an interaction with me with a feeling like that. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Okay, at this point, any other questions before we continue? Yes. yes. This is the first audio talk, so I'm sorry, but um, you mentioned you use YouTube quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Does that, is that mostly just for advertising, or do you make any revenue? We make revenue as well. Okay. Um, and the revenue, um, well, since starting to work together, um, you know, it's drastically increased, and now we fund like, Equipment upgrades, that camera right over there that we're using to film this panel, it's a 4K camera. It wouldn't have been possible without um, the increased YouTube traffic that started after we started partnering together. Um, we, we have a booth, it's um, booth 567 if you're interested in checking us out afterward. But we were able to buy each of the items there. We've got a canopy with different walls, we have um, backdrops, um, you name it. And we have a little bit of merch as well. That was all bought from the YouTube revenue as well. We just keep putting it back into this to further grow it, which will lead um, to some more convention opportunities. Um, it's all an investment. And just to start with follow up then. Mm -hmm. Yep. And about what level of subscribers do you, before you start making revenue? Is there a certain level you found? Um, it it kind of just de depends on the traffic itself. I'm not sure of the exact algorithm. I think for me, it came. A little bit after a thousand subscribers were hit, um, they just, YouTube just wants to get to that point where, um, say, you're having enough views on a monthly basis where it's just going to generate more than a few cents of revenue. Because at first, with the first few paychecks, and this is like after I was able to finally monetize the videos, I was maybe making like 25 cents a month, which was like a joke. <laughs> and you can't even cash out until you get to, I believe it's like 100. Um, for like a, a paycheck with PayPal and everything. So um, yeah, but like if we we're able to do, to do it, like anyone can do it, just um, as a result of continued efforts, like anyone could get to that point. Yeah. And if you do use YouTube for the intent of uh, monetizing it, you have to put out regular content. You have to try and uh, once a week or at least tw twice a month. Mm -hmm put something out. Uh, I don't know if you're into toys or whatnot, you could do an unboxing video, uh, anything. There's no right or wrong. Or you could talk about a cosplay that you're making or uh, you know, cosplay that you want. We have a friend who's very successful uh, on YouTube and he, he made a goal for himself where he was gonna do one video a week and sometimes that video wasn't done yet, so he made a video about the video. Uh, a very quick one saying, this is what's going to come out next week. I'm not quite done, but so it was still something. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the and same thing with Instagram. You have to have 
at least one or two posts a day. Otherwise, nobody's gonna pay attention to your Instagram. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Yeah, but the continued work, it will pay off in the end. Um, there have been some times where it's been discouraging or you might even have people try to put up barriers because they see you know, the potential that you have and how successful it can be. Um, but just remember that it's you who's the passionate one and that at the end of the day with cosplay, combining comics or any other form of social media into it, it's what you're enjoying to do. And you know, no one, can, no one else can take that away from you. Yeah, that you will encounter people that might say something nasty or comment uh, and it'll hurt your feelings or whatnot. Just can't let it affect you. You just have to keep going. If you have an, an idea or a vision, just keep doing it because uh, all, all people that have great things now encountered them and they kept going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I got word that we only have a few minutes left in the panel, but before we conclude, are there any final questions for us? Yes. We do, yes. Um, more so for personal amusement, though, right. or just screwing around with friends. <laughs> yeah. But I do, I do post cosplay stuff on there too. Yeah, but, yeah. as well. It's, it's fun. I, I actually just started about three or four weeks ago, so I'm, I'm sorry I missed missed out on it all this time. I love it. I um, I use some of the filters too on Snapchat, just as jokes to put on the Instagram page, just to you know have the cross promotion going between the pages. Sure. And actually, I like the. If you, if you use Snapchat and you post a picture of that text filter that comes out, I think that's so sharp looking. So I, I, I'll, I'll make it on Snapchat, then I'll put it on Instagram afterwards. Yeah, I actually did that yesterday. Um, I took a selfie. I was Tony Stark yesterday. So I took a selfie of the cosplay and said, come to booth number 567. And that was kind of like the heads up to the following. Like, hey, you know, we're now in Boston Comic Con. Like, come hang out with us. Get your, get your photos. Yeah. Yeah, I get that idea from Jason. He does that all the time. It just looks so cool.